When the subordinate of Dean Hone swung his sword down near the neck of Tham Lang, Tham Lang suddenly shouted, ten times the amount, one thousand gold coins. At this moment, the actions of the subordinate suddenly stopped, and he glanced at Dean Hone. Tham Lang asserted, within ten days, I will repay you one thousand gold coins. Tham Lang had negotiated to repay ten times the debt, as long as they gave him ten days, he would repay in full. Mentioning money, Dean Hone suddenly changed his mind. But he only gave Tham Lang three days to earn 1,000 gold coins, with no room for negotiation. Through this incident, Tham Lang learned that the two family had given Dean Hone a maximum of three days to resolve the matter. However, at this moment, apart from accepting this agreement, he had no other choice. As long as there's breath, there's a chance to turn things around. Dean Hone ordered his subordinates to write a commitment, but they didn't have a pen. Seeing this, Tham Lang said, no need. To affirm his credibility, Tham Lang tore a piece of cloth from his shirt, bit his finger, used his blood to write in commitment, and handed it to Dean Hone. Dean Hone, seeing Tham Lang's determination, then assigned two individuals, 13 and 14, to monitor Tham Lang. If after three days, Tham Lang failed to earn 1,000 gold coins, he would kill Tham Lang's entire family. On the way back, Tham Lang walked slowly, contemplating how to earn money to repay the debt and seek revenge. After a period of thoughtful consideration, he devised a plan to both make money and ensure the safety of his family while exacting revenge on the Ta family. With one stone, three birds were hit. Having thought it through, Tham Lang returned home in one go. In that dilapidated house, Tham Lang saw his father coughing up blood, his younger brother with a broken leg, and his mother in extreme distress. However, all three of them were united, determined to go to the two families' house the next day and demand Tham Lang back. Tham Lang outside took a deep breath and quickly opened the door, bowing his head in apology to his family. Tham Lang's sudden appearance shocked his relatives. His mother, upon seeing her son return, burst into tears, embracing him tightly. She thought she might be dreaming. Tham Lang didn't explain much. After all, his family knew he had been expelled by the Tu family. However, his mother didn't utter a word of reproach. For them, his safe return was more than enough happiness. Moreover, she knew Tham Lang's passion for being a son-in-law was to find a wife. Therefore, she immediately introduced a widow from the Luo family in the village to him. Despite being three years older, but she was considered more beautiful than others. If he was willing to become an archer, he would surely make a substantial profit. Tham Lang, upon hearing this, felt overwhelmed. He didn't expect his mother to be so considerate. Nevertheless, he quickly set aside this matter and rushed to inspect his father's condition to see how critical it was. Certainly, internal injuries were severe, with damage to the lungs, stomach, and spleen. The lungs were bleeding, and there were cracked ribs. It seemed that the soldiers from the Ta family were extremely ruthless. If he could extract the accumulated blood from the lungs and then find medicinal herbs to concoct medicine, it should work. Afterward, Tham Lang went to check on his younger brother. Through his discerning eyes, he observed that his brother's leg was fractured, and the injured area showed signs of inflammation. If left untreated, it would be troublesome. Fortunately, the broken bone was still aligned, avoiding damage to crucial blood vessels. Don't worry about our family lacking funds for medical expenses. No need to fret. Just lie down here for a few days. Half a month later, when I feel better, we'll head to Hai and Vu and perform a street act. When you see a horse-drawn carriage approaching, rush to the wheel, pretend to be injured, and trick people into giving money, said Tham Keen. Hearing this, Tham Lang shook his head in disbelief. In this household, not only were the parents doting on their children, but even the younger brother cherished his older brother to this extent. In his heart, Tham Lang silently vowed not to let them continue suffering like this. After understanding the extent of his brother's and father's injuries, Tham Lang had a conversation with his family for a while before going to bed, disregarding the presence of the two guards, 13 and 14, standing outside. The next day, Tham Lang went up the mountain to gather medicinal herbs, spending the whole day to collect enough. Upon returning home, he started sterilizing needles, knives, and cotton cloths with boiling water, and lit several candles, reluctantly creating a simple operating room. Leveraging his adept medical skills, Tham Lang successfully reconnected Tham Keen's broken bone and used a biopsy method to extract the bruised blood from his father's lungs. His father no longer coughed up blood, and the family couldn't believe that their son had returned and become so skilled. However, 
they didn't question him much. There was a simple reason. Their son had always pretended to be foolish, and now, having turned into such a talented person, they were more joyful than anything else. No need to interrogate further. Unconditional trust prevailed. After recovering from the illness, Tham Lang's parents brought up the topic of him getting married. At this level, his mother advised him to have a broader vision. Seeing that the widow from the Lu family was no longer an option, she suggested Tham Lang open a medicine shop. In a few years, he could then marry the village chief's daughter, making it more prestigious. Thinking about the village chief's daughter, Tham Lang almost choked on water, saying, this kind of beauty is supposed to have a broad vision. Tham Lang quickly and cleverly declined, then went outside to talk to 13 and 14. Your family seems truly happy, but you only have two days left. Don't forget, if you don't come up with a thousand gold coins, your entire family will meet a tragic end, said 13. Just as he left the door, facing their threats, Tham Lang lost interest in responding and went back inside. As he opened the door, he saw his mother bringing a basin of water to wash his feet. Despite his attempts to refuse, she insisted on washing his feet, thinking that if he continued to decline, his mother might think he had become accustomed to luxury. He reluctantly allowed her to wash his feet. Reflecting on the past, Tham Lang realized how terrible he used to be. With a loving family like this, he threw everything away for a girl, a truly regrettable decision. But now, he had replaced his former self, and this was his flesh and blood family. He was determined not to let them suffer anymore. The next morning, while the Tham Lang family was having a simple breakfast, the two brothers, 13 and 14, could no longer contain their impatience. They entered the house directly with the intention of taking Tham Lang to earn money. Seeing their family's curiosity, Tham Lang explained that these two were his friends, then quickly arranged to go with them. Before he left, his mother reminded him to be extremely careful, handing him a boiled egg and saying to eat it when he got hungry. Tham Lang looked at the egg in his hand and couldn't help but feel moved. He had already eaten one for breakfast, and now, with another one, that made two. With two sick family members at home, it seemed like his mother was showing favoritism. However, he assured his mother not to worry. He would return for dinner in the evening. Afterward, he joined 13 and 14 to earn money to repay the debt. On the way to the city, the three of them encountered two gambling addicts wandering the streets, endlessly lamenting their misfortune and discussing ways to recover their losses. Passing by each other, Dean 13 seemed to recognize them, so he waved them down for a chat. The two individuals looked at Dean 13 as if a mouse had seen a cat. Is it 13? One of them asked. Long time no see. Why haven't you come to my place? My father misses you. Yesterday, he even wondered why you didn't come over for tea. Although you owe us a little money, don't act distant because of that. You and our father are like blood brothers. Hearing this, the two individuals became terrified, immediately apologizing and attempting to repay the debt. However, at this moment, Dean 13 changed his expression, draped his arms around them, and said, you don't need to repay this debt. He then led the two into the nearby bushes to talk. Within the bushes, a lively commotion ensued. A while later, Dean 13 emerged alone, wiping his blood-stained sword, and instructed Dean 14, take care of the two bodies. He then turned to talk about his relationship with the two individuals, adding, if you can't afford it, I'll escort you along with those two. Waiting for two more days would be a waste of my time. A thousand gold coins may represent several years of savings for many households, even with contributions from multiple families. For an average poor family, earning such a large amount in today's is truly impossible. But I am not an ordinary person. I don't need today's. Today is enough. In the next six hours, I will earn a thousand gold coins, Tham Lang confidently told Dean 13. Afterward, Tham Lang, along with the two Dean brothers, headed to Hai Vu. He stopped in front of the CMT building, where he intended to both earn money to repay debts and seek revenge on the two family. The CMT building belonged to the Lam family, specializing in trading and dyeing silk, similar to the business of the two family. Upon entering, Tham Lang informed a servant that he needed to meet the owner, stating that he could help the owner earn 5,000 gold coins annually with his sword. Skills. Initially, the servant seemed dismissive and unwilling to cooperate. However, when Dean 13 appeared, the servant immediately invited them inside for tea and said he would fetch the master. Quickly, the owner of the CMT building, named Lam Mac, arrived in the Grand Hall. Without wasting time, 
Tham Lang got straight to the point. He mentioned that he could help Lam Mac's dying workshop earn 5,000 gold coins. Upon hearing the figure of 2,000 gold coins, Lam Mac immediately ordered someone to escort the guests out. At this moment, Tham Lang took out a piece of shiny golden silk and placed it on Mr. Lam's table. Take a look at the color of this silk. Is it worth 2,000 gold coins? Glancing at the fabric, Lam Mac was immediately captivated. He quickly picked it up for closer examination, feeling a bit incredulous. How did the two family become wealthy? Tham Lang explained. It's because their silk is so lustrous that it's exclusively supplied to the royal family. Mr. Lam, imagine if you present this piece of golden silk to the king. What do you think will happen? The two family will be swept into the dustbin of history, and the Lam family will become the wealthiest in Hai and Vu. Tham Lang said while sipping tea. But how do I know if you produce this dye color? It's entirely possible that you just found this piece of silk, Lam Mac doubted. I've brought the materials with me. Give me two hours, and I will dye this golden color for you. I guarantee it will be even more beautiful than this piece of silk, Tham Lang replied. Fine, you can borrow the backyard. If you need anything, just instruct. As long as you can dye this color on the spot and prove that this formula is yours, then consider this business a success, Lam Mac said. 2,000 gold coins were on the line, and the negotiations continued. Dean 13 couldn't help but express unintentional surprise, earning 2,000 gold coins. Moreover, using money-making tactics to seek revenge on the two family. This formula was conveniently developed by Tham Lang during the process of preparing medicine for his father, and its quality surpassed the standards of this era by a significant margin. Lam Mac granted Tham Lang full access to his backyard for dyeing fabric. After two hours, Tham Lang emerged and presented the finished product to Lam Mac for verification. Indeed, he dyed a piece of fabric in a golden color using his formula. Impressed, Lam Mac promptly brought out a chest of gold to exchange for the formula with Tham Lang. After receiving the formula from Tham Lang, Lam Mac instructed his subordinates to dye fabric. It turned out exactly as desired, in the golden color. However, before the money could change hands, two members of the two family arrived with three officials, accusing Tham Lang of stealing their fabric dye formula. Upon arrival, the two father and daughter incessantly accused Tham Lang, and to make matters worse, Tu Thien Thien feigned innocence. She said that if he admitted to being the thief, they wouldn't pursue the matter further, considering it a momentary lapse of judgment. Tham Lang knew he had been betrayed by the bastard lambs to win favor with the twos. If he admitted guilt, the two family might spare his life for the sake of their reputation. However, these people already held a low opinion of Tham Lang. Haha. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that I stole this dye formula? Tham Lang questioned. Tham Lang, you're just a useless person, incapable of achieving anything. How could you research such a formula? The two family has been working in the silk industry for years, consistently improving the golden dye formula, said to Kuang Don. Haha, <laughs> so you don't have any evidence. Honorable officials, if I can create an even better golden dye, wouldn't that clarify the truth? Tham Lang turned to address the officials. At this moment, the officials were momentarily at a loss for words and could only nod to let Tham Lang prove himself to these people. Tham Lang not only compared a particular golden color, but also discussed the purple color in this world. The formula to create the purple color was even more challenging than the golden one. The dye material for the purple color had to be obtained from snails and seashells with color and just one gram of dye material required three thin-shelled shells. Even in the Great Veeam Dynasty, they hadn't mastered the process of obtaining color from shells, relying on the crude method of mixing red and blue. Consequently, the effect was terrible, the color lacked vibrancy, and it faded quickly. Therefore, dyeing in purple has become an unresolved issue in the silk industry in this world. Tham Lang is alone, without money, using the simplest and cheapest method to dye the purple color. However, the two family can mobilize the entire clan's resources. Are you telling me you won't even dare to tackle this? Tham Lang said to the two two family members. Tu Thien Thien looked at her father, and seeing him nod, she continued, stating that if he could produce a more beautiful purple color, then their two family would have nothing more to say. Ha <laughs> ha. Nothing more to say? When the time comes, your family will have to apologize to me. Tham Lang confidently stated. After that, he made a deal that within three hours, he would complete the product, and the truth would be revealed. 
At the same time, he asked the three officials to act as witnesses, and only then did he start dyeing the fabric. The formula and materials that Tham Lang had prepared were ready. Now the task was to make the two family members admit defeat. Six hours later, the skilled dyer of the two family proudly presented a strip of faithful purple silk, displaying the evenly distributed color in front of everyone. After presenting the finished product, he boasted a little, claiming to be a skilled dyer for three generations, with superior craftsmanship, and much more. He then handed a book of ancient formulas to an official named Vuong Lim for examination. Based on the handwriting, these officials determined that this formula was genuine. Along with the manipulative statements from De Kuang Don, the officials immediately issued orders to arrest people. At that moment, Tham Lang stepped out, calming the officials and admiring the two families' product. He couldn't help but praise their talent inwardly. However, regarding his own creation, the purple color of the two family was still immature. Tham Lang took out his purple silk, and just by looking at the color, everyone couldn't help but be amazed. Tham Lang's purple was not only vibrant but also sparkling. The two families' purple color looked pale in comparison. The two family members, father and daughter, looked at Tham Lang's silk in awe, not understanding how he had created such a beautiful purple fabric. Not stopping there, Tham Lang also took out a special strip of silk. As he unveiled it, the onlookers were dazzled. After a dazzling display, Tham Lang held a seven-color strip of silk in his hand. It was so eye-catching that even the officials had to come and see it up close. The color transition was very natural. How could one achieve such a result? Truly ingenious and fantastic. Facing Tham Lang's masterpiece, Tu Kuang Don could not find words to say, angrily leaving. As for Tu Thien Thien, despite her reluctance, she had to apologize for the sake of appearances. She didn't expect Tham Lang to suddenly become so outstanding.